Hey guys, Mr. Zegner here. We're going to look into Google Sheets a little bit more, um, using formulas, looking at some statistics, bringing in a graph, and specifically looking at some temperatures uh, for where I live. So I did a Google search right here and found the average monthly temperatures of the county I live and work in, and I was able to create this table. Now, you might be thinking, oh, I need some help making a table like this, and I get that, but what I'm going to be doing next follows the same exact procedure of how you would make this table. So if you listen to the next two parts uh, of what I'm going to do with my statistics for these numbers, I think making this table will make sense. So uh, here we go. All right, so first thing is um, I want to look at creating... Um, some high temperature statistics. And by that, I mean mean, median, uh, some other ones are mode and range, maximum and minimum numbers, stuff like that. You can see I already did the range here. That's something I might actually want to repeat and delete that part and start all over. So range is the difference between the highest number and the lowest number. Now, usually a math teacher might give you a whole big list of numbers. And in that case, to find the range, you would need to find the largest number, and then find the smallest number in that list and do a subtraction problem. But with just having one high temp and low temp number, it's, it's easy. There's the big number and there's the little number. So here's the formula you can use. And then I have a neat little trick here. So we always put an equal sign in. That's how all formulas begin in Google Sheets and also Microsoft Excel. So uh, it's a subtraction problem. So watch this. After I put the equal sign, I'm just going to tell it what to do. So I want you to take this number, so the number in B2, minus the number in C2. Okay, and I press Enter. And there it is. And indeed, 43 take away 29. Do the math. That is 14. Now here's a neat trick. I could keep on typing in these formulas, equals uh, this one minus this one, but there's a shortcut. So let me show you what that is. If you click up here on that cell that we just finished, right up here is what it actually has typed in, equals B2 minus C2, and then the answer to that is 14. But do you see this little blue box in the bottom right corner? In fact, if I hover over it, my pointer turns into like a cross or a plus sign. There it is. It, once it turns into that plus sign or cross, you click and hold and drag down all the way to the row with December, and now check out this magic. Bam, it actually creates the correct formula for finding all the differences. Let me just randomly pick one. How about, uh, gosh, here, July. Oh, I'm sorry, May, June, this is June. 79, take away 64, yep, that is 15. But look, the formula actually says B7 minus C7, and that's right, because this is B7, and this is C7. So that's a great little trick when you see that little box and drag it all down. Uh, if you already had that formula in the first one. So that's a great shortcut that Google Sheets has built in. Okay, so here we go. Uh, how about we do some high temp uh, statistics? You know what? Uh, that font's not matching, though. So here's something I can do for that. Uh, what font was I using? Oh, Pacifico. All right. So if you click above the one, uh, this gray box to the left of the A and above the one, that highlights the whole spreadsheet. So let's make everything this Pacifico. There it is. See, now it matches. Um, how about we, looks like these are all centered. So I come right here, horizontal alignment and center everything. Looking good. Now, what size is this? 10? And those are 12. Hmm. How about we make everything 12? So let me highlight everything again. And drag down and hit 12. Yep. Oh, good. Now everything is going to look right. The next thing, I think I might want to do what's called merge. I want to bring two cells together to be just one. So notice I clicked on E1 and dragged over to F1. Up here in my toolbar, there's a shortcut for that. Merge cells. And bam, now those two cells are one, and it even centered it between the two of them. Nice. So, gosh, what should we do? How about mean? And we'll do median. Uh, and since this is our high temperatures, how will we do the max, the maximum number? All right, let's, uh, let's format this. Now, this is kind of like how I created this table over here. So do pay attention to what I'm up to over here because it's the same procedure as making this table. 
So I'm going to click all borders right here. So let me get away from that again and show you what I did. So I hover over here. See how it says borders? Click on borders, and then I hit all borders. Now, since this is high temperatures, I think I might make the line red so the color can be changed right here. Nice. You could even change how thick the line is or what it looks like. So all kinds of choices here. I'm, I'm happy with the thick line, though. All right, how about we get this colored also since this is all red? So how about we use a light red for our numbers? That's right here. Here's my fill color. Looks like a paint can tipping over. So maybe a light red there, but a little bit darker for the words. Cool. And how about a little darker for the title? So one, two, three. Yeah, I like that. Very nice. Okay. Um, the formula for mean actually uses the other word for mean, which is average. So equals average. And now you can see as I type, I'm getting a bit of a pop-up there of other choices. And there's different types of averages. I don't have time to talk about that today. We're just going to use the basic average formula. Then I put in an opening parentheses. Now here's a neat trick. I could type the rest of the formula in, but I can also, and I really enjoy doing this, just click and hold and drag. So since we're working with high temperatures, I click and hold on the first high temperature of January and I drag down to December. And notice it copy pasted that information into the formula. Now all I have to do is close my parentheses Close my parentheses. There we go. And press enter. Now, I already preset this to just round this number off at three after the decimal. But you might get a long decimal number here. And here's how you deal with that. So you might get something that looks more like this. Okay. And we, want it, we don't need all those threes. Most math teachers usually have you round off at the nearest thousandth, which is three after the decimal. So how you get rid of all those extra threes is you come right here decrease decimal spaces. It says 0, 0.0 with an arrow going to the left. So just tap that a few times and you can round it off to the exact spot you want it to. Okay, moving on. Median is equals median. Open parentheses and now same trick. Click on the beginning of our high temperatures and drag down to the last high temperature. Don't forget to close your parentheses. And there's our median. That's when you put all of these numbers in order from smallest to largest and find the middle. You might be thinking, yeah, but you didn't type a 64.5. So why is it 64.5? Well, with 12 months, that means there's two numbers in the middle. So what Google Sheets is doing is finding the middle of those two middle numbers. <laughs> Actually, the average of the two numbers in the middle. So uh, let me make up a scenario. Maybe one is 64, the other one's 65, the two numbers in the middle. And what's halfway between 64 and 65? Well, 64.5. So that's an example of what Google Sheets might be doing there. Okay, and the maximum number? Sure, I could look through the list and try to find the biggest one, but why not just let Google Sheets do that for me? So it's equals max, opening parentheses, click and drag from B2 down to B13, close the parentheses. And what's the biggest number? 84. Let's see if we can find that. There it is. Okay, so July was our warmest month. Okay, we're going to repeat for low temps. So low temp. Uh, we're going to do mean, median, and how about minimum? Since these are our low temps. I think I'll merge these two cells again. Merge. Hit that button. Good. Okay. Now, why don't we do our border boxes around our cells? Ah, uh, you know what? I don't want red for low temperatures. How we go blue? Blue looks good. There we go. How about we shade it so it looks nice? How about a light blue here? A little bit darker here. And a little bit darker here. Oops. Uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, let's repeat our formulas. So it's equals average, opening parentheses. Now we're working with low temps this time. So click and drag down through all of our low temps. Don't forget to close the parentheses and press enter. <clears throat> and again, that's a rounded decimal number. I could increase the decimal numbers, the number of decimal places, or I could decrease it. There we go. I'm happy with three after the decimal. 
median was equals median, opening parentheses, drag down through all my low data, low temperature data, close the parentheses, that median is 48. And the minimum is just like maximum, except you type MIN, opening parentheses, drag down through all the data, close the parentheses. What's the smallest number? 29? Oh, so January's number is the lowest. Fantastic. How about we uh, also bring in a graph? So I'm going to click and drag from A1. And let's only deal with the high and low temperatures. I'm not going to worry about range. So I didn't include that. So I've got months, high temps, and low temps. And I created a highlighted box around all three of those columns. Now what's neat is you can come right over here to the insert chart. Google Sheets will look at the data and try to pick a, a chart that makes sense for what we're doing. Okay, and I like this one, a double line graph. I think I might want to adjust it a little bit, <clears throat> but that's a good start. Okay, let's customize it. Start with chart style. Let's how about we add a background color. Um, how about like a little yellow, light yellow in the background. Notice the, the jaggedness, like it's not very smooth some of the points, the lines they drew, you can actually have it smooth out those. Now watch the difference between how it looks now. Keep your eyes over here. I'm gonna click on smooth over here. Did you see the difference? If not, maybe uh, pause and replay the last few seconds of the video and maybe you can see the difference. Okay, that's pretty much all I wanna change here. Maybe a different font. I love wide, it's so bold and thick. There we go, I, I love that font. All right, anything else here? No. Let's go down to chart and axis title. Hmm. No, I don't really see anything here I want to change. Nah. I'm okay with all that. I think in series is the next thing I might want to change. Yeah, see, notice the high temp has blue and the low temp has red. Let's do, let's let's reverse that. I want to I want to switch those because high temp being red seems to make more sense. So here we go. I click in series change it to high temperature and let's make that one be red and now let's go to our low temp and make that one blue that make to me that makes a lot more sense blue for cold red for hot uh, we could even have a little bit of fun with the lines you can start changing uh, that's a dashed style eh, I guess the solid lines okay um, and there's some other things you can play with but you know what I think the graphs looking pretty good now just the way it is. Uh, of course, you could always play with those editing features and um, customize it to your preferences. I think I'll uh, drag this over a little bit so it fits. I'm going to bring it over here to the end of our high and low temp data. Let's maybe resize it here, clicking in the middle, dragging up. Looks like I have some room to drag it off to the right a little bit more to spread out the graph. Hey, there we go. That's looking pretty good. So here you've seen, again, uh, using st solving some uh, statistics problems based on uh, temperature, how to set up tables and um, import and edit a graph in Google Sheets. Hope you found this helpful. Um, thanks a lot, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye now.